Hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. In this vlog, I want to share my thoughts on the movie Ready Player One. I went to see it last night in Sligo. Ready Player One is, I suppose, a science fiction film produced by, produced by and directed by Steven Spielberg. It was written by Zach Penn and a guy called Ernest Cline, and it's loosely based on Cline's 2011 novel of the same name. The movie itself stars Ty Sheridan, Olivia Cook, Ben Mendelsohn, with a pretty good supporting cast, including Lena Waithe, Simon Pegg, Hannah John Carman, and Mark Reliance, and others. The movie itself is set in the year 2045, where everybody lives their lives in a virtual world called the Oasis, not unlike today. To a point. We're kind of getting there, aren't we? There's nowhere left to go. Nowhere. Except the Oasis. A whole virtual universe. Um, the Oasis was created by a guy called James Halliday. It's played by Mark Ryland. And in the, in the Oasis, you can look however you want to be, you can be whoever you want to be, and you can drive whatever car you want, uh, provided you have the coinage to do so. Before Halliday died, he offers the ownership of the Oasis to whomever was worthy enough and clever enough to discover the three keys. And that's pretty much the premise of the movie. If you're watching this, I'm dead. I created a hidden object, an Easter egg. The first person to find the egg will inherit half a trillion dollars and total control of the oasis itself. There's a bit of Willy Wonka stroke Indiana Jones type of a feel to this story. Um, the winner should be in Halliday's eyes at least worthy and willing to keep his vision for the Oasis going. Um, the main character, a fella called uh, Wayne Watts, stroke Parzival, played by Ty Sheridan. And here's where it gets a little bit confusing because it's an actor playing a character who in turn has an avatar in the Oasis. And that's the same for all the actors in the movie. A bit like Avatar, the movie itself. So, his character hooks up with a character called Archimus, played by Olivia Cook, and they have a kind of a, a bunch of merry men or odd characters, both in the, the, the visual world of the Oasis and the real world. And they try to discover uh, the clues in which to find the three keys, which allow him, stroke them, to win the game and get gain control of the Oasis. Uh, simple. But for the bad guy, the bad guy of the movie is called Nolan Sorrento. It's a great name. Uh, Nolan Sorrento is like, like a Bond villain name. Um, he's your typical corporate business type bad guy. He wants the Oasis for himself and to make money, etc. And it's Ben Mendelsohn who plays him. And he is just, he's great. He's a great, great bad guy. This guy, Sorrento, he has a whole army of people working for him trying to figure out the clues and get the three keys before any of the common ordinary folk like our heroes are trying to do. I'm talking about actual life and death stuff. The Oasis. The world's most important economic resource. And it's nothing less than a war. We're in control of the future. Welcome, sir. He has both a real life henchman or woman played by Hannah John Carmen and a virtual henchman called Irock by uh, and he's played by TJ Miller and they do their jobs both inside and outside the Oasis to try and catch Parzival, uh, Wayne Watts etc Samantha you know and, 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 and that's the movie that's kind of the movie in a nutshell <laughs> I only came here to escape, but I found something much bigger than just myself. Are you willing to fight? I loved it. 
I thought it was a great, great movie. I loved all the nods, um, all the Easter eggs to the 80s and 90s pop culture. They were fabulous. I love that kind of stuff. Some I got, some went right over my head. Um, I wasn't a big gamer down through the years. I, I dabbled a little bit in the whole gaming world. Um, but I, I appreciated the nods and recognised some of them. But like I said, some of them were way over my head and I probably missed a load of it because everything, everything is moving so quickly. You, you know, you're blinking, you miss something. The music used in the movie is fantastic. Some of my all-time favourite tunes from the era, references to some of the best movies from the 80s and 90s are in there. I, I just loved every bit of it. Uh, a guy called Alan Silvestri did the music. Um, originally John Williams was supposed to do it but he pulled out to go on and score The Postman and Alan Silvestri does a fabulous job he did movies like Back to the Future which features uh, a lot in this um, movie not only the car which you get to see in the trailer but there's a reference to Robert Zemeckis and more and, and the, the music is just class I really 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 enjoyed this movie and it's nostalgia the car race scene is amazing the graphics are unreal it's and i think it's a great story if i was to have anything negative at all about it it would be how quickly the characters bond with each other but that's a flaw in a lot of movies these days i would have liked a couple more scenes maybe where they would bond a bit more maybe where they would develop their character a bit more and their friendships a bit more put them in a couple of other situations where you see them developing and their friendship etc but then again, that might make the movie even longer than what it is already. At 140 minutes, it's still pretty long, but I loved it. Um, I'd go see it again, even just to hear the music and try and spot a few more of the Easter eggs, which there are tons of. I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm convinced there was <coughs> reference to E.T., but I could be wrong. Star Wars got a nod. I think Harry Potter, but I don't know. I, I just There's so much stuff going on. Um, I can't wait for it to come out now on Blu-ray. I will most definitely, definitely be, be buying it. This one definitely going to add to my collection. I would go see it if you haven't in the cinema, if you can at all. This needs the big screen treatment for the first time. I saw it in the Max screen in the Omniplex in Sligo. Um, as always, a great experience. And the lads inside in the cinema always, you know, they do a great job. The Sligo cinema is great. Um, I would highly, highly recommend you go see this before it leaves the big screen. You do need the big, big screen experience. Be warned though, if you are bringing the kids, it does get a little hairy in the middle. And there are a few scenes um, as it references another great movie, which I won't spoil for you, from the 1980s. That's not in any way, shape or form designed for children. It's 12s accompanied for a reason. I'd give it, I'd give Ready Player One maybe four, four out of five. Um, there's already rumors of a sequel, which I, which I certainly do hope that they make. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I hope um, if you do go to see it, that you'll enjoy it as well. If you've, if, if, if you've seen it already, or if you do go to see it, I'd love to know what you thought of it. Uh, maybe after you see it or come back and leave a comment in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Do you don't agree with me? Um, I, I would definitely go see it um, as always thanks for watching if you like this video maybe uh, hit that like button give the thumbs up consider uh, hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell and um, we'll see you the next time